Okay, time for an update video. Last time you heard from me, I was traveling back down south to Perth. Uh, obviously, I got back to Perth in the last video. Uh, didn't really film anything else while I was in Perth because I spent the whole time with family. Uh, I also started searching for a new job and uh, I got one pretty much right away. <laughs> so a couple of things before we get into that. Firstly, where am I? Uh, I'm in Kelleberin. It's uh, sort of two or three hours east of Perth in uh, the Western Australian wheat belt. You may notice behind me there's, uh, let's see how, because I'm using a couple of controller times. Yeah, there's this whole bedroom behind me. Uh, that's because I'm actually living in a house now. <laughs> So, for where I'm working, for uh, $70 a week, I'm living in this place, sharing it with two other guys. They're never around at the weekend, so I've got a place to myself every weekend, which is kind of cool. Uh, secondly, the job. Uh, yep, obviously it's in the wheat belt, so this is a, you know, agricultural wheat-based job. But it's not, it's not a farming job this time, uh, to that. That was not fun. <laughs> uh, I'm actually back in the manufacturing job. Uh, the company I work for, Moiling Grain Silos, we build grain silos. So that's good fun. And yeah, as I said, like um, building grain silos, manufacturing job, it's more what I'm accustomed to. And it's much better pay than the farming work, which is great news. So I don't mind spending the $70 a week staying in this place because the money I make just counters that easily. It's a bit of a state, obviously, because backpackers live here, you know, so you get ants roaming around, the kitchen's kind of always a mess, and the bathroom's a mess, and all that stuff. Uh, but still, I can't complain for $70 a week. It's got, you know, a fridge, it's got the oven, it's got everything that I need to, like, store food, cook food, and you notice how I'm talking about food quite a lot here, that's like the most important thing to me. <laughs> and now in the bathroom here, it's got a shower, so I get to stay clean and everything, which is good news. Um, yeah, you probably noticed that uh, I'm kind of struggling with the camera. It, it's kind of, it's very smooth, but sometimes I have to adjust it a little bit. That's because I bought myself a gimbal. <laughs> there it is, the gimbal. Nice smooth shots with that. So yeah, I guess point number three is the car. Uh, I didn't sell it when I got back to Perth. Uh, it's still broken, but it still runs. So I'm just keeping it going, using it to get to and from work. Yeah, I guess point number four now is uh, my second year visa. Obviously this job is going towards my second year visa. I needed something like 50 odd days when I left the farming place. I'm now three, four weeks into uh, the work at this new place, so I've probably only got you know 30 days left or something, probably less than that at this point actually. So I, I reckon by sort of you know Christmas time, I should have the the days I need. The money that I'm earning from this place is really good, so I do plan to stay here for quite a while, even after I've got my second year visa. I, I want to keep working, keep earning some money, because there's a lot of stuff that I want to do and it's quite expensive. Yeah. Woo! So smooth. It doesn't really keep up with me though when I start turning. I'm off the camera now and the lighting's really bad. Woo! Okay, if you're wondering why you haven't heard from me in a little while, let me explain. So for the past 
last month I've been a bit busy stripping down the engine of the car because guess what, the head gasket blew. So I was out with some of the guys uh, on a camping trip and was driving around about midday kind of thing for three straight hours and yeah, the car overheated catastrophically this time. Uh, there was white smoke coming out of the exhaust and when I took off the oil cap, there was gunk in there. Which are two clear signs that the head gasket is completely buggered. So, I ordered new parts, uh, they had to be shipped over from America, so they took a little while to get here, but they are here now. So I've got all of the gaskets, all of the seals that I need to get the engine back together. But yeah, I've spent a couple of hours each morning when it's nice and cool, when there aren't that many flies around, just taking it all apart stripping it down, getting it all into the garage so that I could clean it up and get the new gaskets in when I put it back together eventually. So when I did eventually get the head off, damn there was a lot of water in the cylinders. You know, a couple of them were full up with coolant. I'm absolutely amazed the engine didn't blow from the pressure build up from that because that's just astounding that it's still in one piece at the moment. So I guess luckily we sort of, you know, I switched it off as soon as it started overheating again and we got it on the back of a trailer, took it back to the house and ever since then I've just been working at it, stripping it down. And now I'm at the point where it's all in pieces. I can start putting it back together with the new gaskets in place after it's had a bit of a clean up. And then hopefully I'll be able to switch it on, start it up and be back out driving in it. So, I guess that'll be the next video that we see that in. Uh, okay, so I know today you was probably hoping for the resolution to my car saga, but uh, due to, you know, having to order parts in and wait around for them and me not really knowing what I'm doing, uh, that's not going to happen just yet. The engine's together, but there's a bit of a leak, so I need to take it apart again and then put it back together and like, I can't get it to start. So there's all these things going on that hopefully will be in a later video surrounding the car and what happens with that. So instead, uh, I'm going to talk about something that's probably gonna scare quite a few people, the creepy crawlies out here in Australia. The interesting thing about kind of working both, you know, in this uh, manufacturing place and back on the farm, you encountered quite a lot of, you know, insects, spiders, things like that, even a snake on the farm, that was really cool. Uh, but at this place, there are a lot of spiders all over the place, including redbacks and a huntsman. I've had things like driving through swarms of locusts to get to work, that was pretty interesting. One of the guys spotted a bobtail lizard one day, which was quite cool, so that was just crawling through the car park. Really strange, but quite interesting to see out in the wild. Uh, I found countless redbacks, you know, out outside of this house and at work. I ended up finding a little lizard one day that was quite cute, you know. He just, I was actually sweeping up and I thought he was just like a, a bit of silicon, but it turned out it was this little lizard thing. Okay, I finally found a huntsman. It's so quick. It literally just crawled all the way up my back and around onto my other arm. Ah, oh, look at that thing. Oh, it's moving. Oh, come on. Don't, don't. Look at him. He's not that big, but still, that's fucking cool. This is my new house buddy. Oh, you're right there, mate. <laughs> yep, that's right. That's a huntsman right there. I have decided to name him Chris Hemsworth. Uh, the reason behind that is Chris Hemsworth was in the movie Snow White and the Huntsman. He was the Huntsman, hence Chris Hemsworth. Uh, from previous videos you may have noticed there's a lot of uh, insects around this place, mainly ants. Uh, apparently Huntsmen don't eat ants, so that's kind of a nuisance. But they're supposed to be really good house spiders because they eat other spiders, like the redback, and take over their webs. Okay, so I've come up with a plan of what to do with Chris Hemsworth. This area seems to be like the epicenter of where the ants are coming from. So I'm kind of hoping that he's gonna set up camp right in this doorway and stop insects from getting from this pantry area into my kitchen. He doesn't seem to be moving though, he's kind of just sat there. 
Well, I'm hoping that he does something eventually. Okay, so about a week ago, I released Chris Hemsworth into the house and he just disappeared. I had no idea where he was for ages and I finally found him. So when I walked into the kitchen this morning, I saw this. Da -da -da -da. Chris Hemsworth, he's back, baby.